Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse and to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to go over and check and see. Let's see. It looks like I'm live. Oh my gosh, it's actually working. Uh, I went live earlier today as a test. Some of you may have seen that already. Um, comment if you can hear me. <laughs> this is my greatest source of anxiety that I'm live and you can't hear me for some strange reason or that there's an echo of some kind. So um, leave a comment uh, to uh, let me know that you can actually hear me. Give people just a second to join in. So today is an exciting day uh, because, <laughs> let's see, this is my first ever YouTube live minus the test that I did um, earlier today. Um, oh good, okay. <laughs> I see a comment that I am heard. Yay, I'm so glad. And I see people joining in. Wonderful. I'm so glad. So welcome to my first ever YouTube Live. This is an exciting day, not just because it's my first uh, YouTube Live, but it's also I'm celebrating this month, my 21st anniversary uh, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. It's a huge milestone. And every year around this time, I do some fun kinds of things to celebrate my anniversary. So um, I'm going to be sharing more about that with you shortly. I also have a paper crafting project, uh, super fun and uh, pretty simple, but fun project. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of kind of blast from the past, uh, show you some past projects from a long time ago, just for fun. I'm going to do that towards the end. So you'll get an opportunity to depart if you don't want to be part of that part. Um, and I'm also going to tell you a little bit about my story, just kind of in the mix. I'm going to do it after I show the project. So again, if you really don't want to know my story, you don't have to stick around and listen to it. <laughs> So that's what I have planned today. I'm just going to run on over and see if I see comments over on YouTube and here on Facebook. Let's see. I'm not on Facebook. On, uh, <laughs> on YouTube. This is, yeah, it's just learning, right? Uh, hi, Trish. Hi, Laura Lee. Hi, Sharon. Yay. So glad you guys are here. Thank you for sharing, Sharon. Um, last week, I announced that I was considering going live on YouTube as just kind of mix it up and decided to bite the bullet and do it today. So anyway, I'm so glad you're here. Comment and let me know where you're from. If you feel so inclined, I always like to know uh, where people are coming from um, uh, as I talk with you. So I do have a couple of announcements today, uh, things going on. So I'm going to quickly switch my screen over and cover up the lovely stamp set that I'm going to use and just go through those super quickly before we get into the fun. So um, as you can see, I have share, tag, follow, like, subscribe, right? So whether you're watching, well, you're watching here on YouTube, uh, please subscribe and share this video with others. I so appreciate that and spreading the word about my paper crafting fun that I share. I mentioned that it's my 21st anniversary celebration and I am actually gonna be out of town uh, next week, uh, leaving my family behind at home because uh, I'm going to on stage, which is the Stampin' Up! convention. Uh, that happens, well, we haven't had one of this size that I've been able to attend since 2018. So super excited for that. And I'm going to be joining uh, some of my team members um, there in Houston and lots of friends from all over the place. Uh, and it'll be so fun to see friends at on stage and swapping and all the fun things, new products, new catalog, all that fun stuff. So super excited. So I'm going to be gone next week. My actual anniversary is the 14th of March. All right, moving right along. So um, uh, there are new online exclusive products. That's my next up announcement. I have a new technique class. I'm calling it Brilliant Black because we are going to be stamping on black, but it's going to be bright and cheerful and colorful too. And if you are interested, I'm going to be showing sneak peeks of the three projects that I'm going to be um, showing and teaching in that class at the end of the video. So uh, barring me forgetting. <laughs> I have notes, so hopefully I'm not going to forget. Remind me if you feel so inclined later. Uh, let's see what else. The Maker's Mojo Creative Escape event just happened a couple of weeks ago, and um, you can get that whole tutorial collection. There's uh, a link in the video description today. Um, but I have also decided to pop out um, from that collection my um, tutorial specifically. So my two presentations were called Ravishing Reflections and Pop-Up Perfection. 
Um, so I have created uh, PDFs for those, which I did for the event, but I'm offering them as an a la carte tutorial uh, for anybody that may not want the whole tutorial collection, but may want the things that I offered at that event. So there's links in the description of the video for those as well. Um, the Makers Moto team often does an add-on class or a class that we offer that goes live for Makers Mojo participants. The one we just did was this Sweet Thoughts Card of Palooza class, which uses the Sweet Thoughts cards, Memories and More cards. And um, I've had that open for registration. People have signed up for kits, um, but now the kits are no longer available because the registration closed, but there is an instant download. If you have that Sweet Thoughts, Memories and More card pack, or you wanna purchase it, there are 10 cards in that tutorial. And if you purchase it in the link in the description of this video, it's an instant download. So you pay for it and you get it right away, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. Um, I always offer free PDF tutorials in my weekly newsletters. And um, the next one will come out next Wednesday and it will be for the project that I'm showing you today. So just FYI. And uh, because I'll be traveling next week, I will not be doing a, um, well, I will not be going live <laughs> on YouTube or on Facebook. So the next one will be on March 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So those are all my updates. Um, all the details about all of that stuff is in the description of this video. So uh, check it out. Hi, Missy. Thank you for joining in. Welcome. And thank you for the happy anniversary wishes. <laughs> and you're glad I moved to YouTube. Yay. Yes. So fun. Well, so far it's smooth and I'm super excited for that. I'm not, I'm, you can hear me. There's no feedback. Love it. <laughs> that's, uh, it, yeah, that's, I'm excited for that. Right? Technical difficulties are always challenging and I'm so I don't have any today so far. Yeah. All right. So, um, all right, let's see. So let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. Um, if you are not familiar with me, I'm just going to put me back on screen. I'm Melissa Kerman of Melissa's Crafting Treehouse, Stamp It Up demonstrator for 21 years as of March 14th next week. <laughs> and uh, I love what I do. And uh, I'm excited to share my story with you in just a bit. Um, I'll share it after the project. Um, but I wanted to share, this is my web address, so you can find me online. I have a website with lots of ideas on my blog, tons of crafting projects that you can check out over there if you haven't seen me over there uh, before. And uh, I have an online store as well. You can get to my store through my website. And here is my current host code. So uh, that's also in the description of this video as well. So you can grab that um, if you would like to place an order. All right, and I give perks for when you place orders as well using the host code. All right, so you guys probably wanna see what I'm creating today. So let's get started with that. Let's switch my camera over to the desktop again. Um, the project that I'm showing you today features this Everyday Details uh, bundle. And I just love the artwork in this stamp set. It's so pretty. It's coloring in, which is not usually my go-to, um, but I love the blends alcohol markers. It's totally converted me uh, into somebody who loves coloring. And um, it's not necessarily my greatest talent, I don't think, but I still love the results. And I feel like an artist when I, when I color with my blends alcohol markers. So we're also using these Everyday Details dies, which are the ones that coordinate with these um, for the project. I'll put that aside and just show you the project. So here we go. That's our project for today. Super simple um, with a bunch of coloring in. I'm going to show you how to do the shading and all that good stuff. This was my uh, Color Fusers blog hop color challenge project. Um, I have a blog post for this uh, already. We're going to change this up just a little bit so you'll get to see a slightly different version of uh, this card. Is that actually in focus? I can't even tell. Looks a little out of focus. Um, so we'll mix it up just a little bit and um, uh, I'll get you in on what you think and changing it up. All right, so let's see what else. Um, yeah, so I've got an inside as well. Pretty little decorated colored inside. So let's set that up here off in the corner so you can see it. All right, so we're going to start with our coloring in. But actually, before I do that, I want to show you that um, one of the things that's tricky about these dyes is there's so many little holes in here that I find that they kind of stick 
in the holes when you die cut. And a trick for avoiding that problem is to use wax paper. You can use um, wax paper with your die and run it through just as is. Um, let's go ahead and do this just to test it out on camera and um, show you how it works. So if you run it through without wax paper, or without having treated your die with wax paper, those pieces stick. You can you can do it alone, run it through alone, just using your regular layers. So your base, your cutting plate, your die, and your wax paper. And I do this with some regularity with some of my dies where the pieces get stuck in there and just run it through like that. But you can also do it at the same time. So let's do that. And I'm hoping that, um, all my little pieces are gonna fall out like without any issues. So you're gonna be able to see it. So we're using this piece for the focal piece on the card. And if you haven't uh, used this wax paper trick, it's really a pretty awesome trick because um, it's, uh, it's kind of a pain to poke out all those pieces from your dies. So let's just Move the other stuff aside. I've got my die cut piece. The wax paper's on top, but it cuts out just perfectly. You can say I only have like two little spots where the, the piece has stuck in there. And then we've got this. Who knows what we could do with that? <laughs> and then uh, I'm just going to toss this scrap piece. And now I can just go like this, break over it. And my pieces are going to come out a lot easier than that wax paper. So I've got a few pieces still in there, you can see, but most of those little, um, the white cardstock that gets stuck in the holes is gone. And that's because the wax paper uh, helped it to do that. So especially with this die and with some others that are detail oriented, um, that's a especially useful tip, I find. Comment if you've um, used that tip before or um, you're familiar with it or, you know, how it's worked for you in the past. Okay. All right. So now I, I, I see, uh, let's see, someone says uh, that coloring is not their forte, Missy. Um, well, I don't feel like it is mine either, but like I said, the blends have kind of changed my whole thinking about coloring in. Okay. So I die cut that piece, but I've already stamped a piece off camera. Now I used my Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to be doing coloring in. So this is the ink pad you want to use. Um, if you use uh, the stays on, it will, it will react with the alcohol and the edges will bleed. So you don't want that. So you need this water-based ink pad. You can also use uh, regular classic pads as well, which are water-based if you want. All right. So we're going to bring in our blends alcohol markers here. I've got my pool party. So I should say the color scheme here is pool party sweet sorbet and lost lagoon now there isn't or i don't own the any lost lagoon blends alcohol markers so i'm going to pull in this regular marker for it and i'm going to use it for the smallest elements on here maybe i'll just start with that um and uh because they're small you really can't really do a whole lot of blending with it anyway so the um the marker works just fine now this again is the color scheme for um the March Color Fusers blog hop. And the Sweet Sorbet is one of the outgoing in color. So it's a 2022-24 in color. And uh, I've been using this set of colors quite a bit lately because they're retiring. And uh, some of these colors are my all time favorite colors. And I just realized I colored this differently. I meant to do those in the red. <laughs> All right. Well, so this is going to be more different than I thought it was going to be. This is what happens. I get distracted talking to all, to all you guys. All right. So you can see on my original, I did the red uh, on there and I did Lost Lagoon on those. It was supposed to be the tiny itty bitty ones, right? Because you can't really blend. So guess what, which is going to now be red instead. <laughs> oh, going live. The joys getting distracted. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and do the... Um, the little itty bitty ones in red. I wanted it to be different anyway, right? And usually when I go live and I do a project, I, I do um, try to mix it up a little bit 
just because, you know, just to see what it looks like in a different way. So I've done the light um, sweet sorbet here. And I'll be honest with you, the sweet sorbet of all the five in colors, the 2022, 24 in colors is my least favorite of the colors. <laughs> But I'm on a mission to use all these colors in these last few months because the catalog is retiring and uh, all these colors are going to go away. And I do love this color combination. I think it's really sweet. So I just did the light sweet sorbet. And now I'm just going to do a touch of the dark in the center of these itty bitty flowers. Probably won't even be able to tell, but I'm going to do it anyway. Try to get that shading, even though they're tiny. All right. Um, I like to start with my light blends when I do this. And now I'm going to go into my big flower. And I'm doing the light one over most of it. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of white towards the edge of the, the petal. So the other in colors that are part of this set are Orchid Oasis, Starry, Starry Sky. Did I have that right? Yes. <laughs> Tahitian Tide and Parakeet Party. And I love those colors. I've been using them a ton. And on my brilliant black class, I've used the three of those colors. I've used Orchid Oasis, Parakeet Party, and Tahitian Tide. All right. So let's come in with our dark blends now to work on this flower. I'm going to bring it up to the camera so you can see where it is now. Um, so now I'm going to work on some shading on the dark and I'm coming in with my dark sweet sorbet and just going into the center with some highlights of the dark color. And the more you go over it, the darker the color is going to get. All right. And then it's pretty subtle, right? The dark in the center. Um, so now I'm going to actually take my a color lifter and do a little bit of kind of shading. Hi, Megan. Oh yes, you found me. I'm so glad you found me. <laughs> so um, one of the cool things about YouTube Live that I have learned in my short time doing this um, is that if I schedule it, I'm scheduling it through StreamYard. You can see the StreamYard logo up there. Um, and I can schedule it ahead of time. And then when you go on YouTube, you see uh, the thumbnail for the photo for the uh, live and it tells you how long you have until the live goes live <laughs> uh, the, the video goes live and um, and you can also click a button a little bell that says uh, you know notify me when when the video goes live so I think that's a really cool feature um, and a little bit better than the options on Facebook because on Facebook you just kind of have to noodle around and, and find find uh, me in the feed. All right. So I just did a, a, that uh, color lifter along the edges to kind of lighten it up just a little bit more, give me a little bit of uh, more contrast between the inside dark sweet sorbet and the outside edges. All right. Okay. So um, now, yeah. Now this is actually the, the marker, right? I did that in Lost Lagoon, but I'm gonna try going over the kind of edges to lighten the edges with the color lifter, see if it does anything. I think it's um, taken a little bit of the Lost Lagoon where it's pure white and not necessarily lightening it up too much, but it's not making a mess of it, so that's good. So there's what we got so far. All right, and now I'm going to use my um, pool party and color in all the leaves. And it's kind of faster to do it with this thick brush tip, but you have less control. But right now I just kind of want it to move along faster. So I'm going in and hopefully I'll stay inside the lines. If I don't, I have a trick. I'll show you. All right, so I pretty much got that all covered with the light pool party. It's pretty subtle. Coming in with the fine tip because I can be uh, get in there a little bit more. Get okay, putting another layer on. It's going to make it a little bit darker, and then I'll come in with the dark. So let's look at it again. 
so easy. So easy for somebody who's not a, a color inner. <laughs> not first, my first go to. I love the results. So when I do this with the dark, I like to kind of go over the veins with the dark to the extent that I can and make sure to leave the edges lighter. It's pretty subtle. All right. So there we got so far. There we go so far. All right. I froze for a second there. All right. So now I've got some smoky slate and have a brand new smoky slate one. Yeah, this is my brand new one. So I'm going to go over the whole pot here with my smoky slate. And this is the, the light, the light one that I'm doing. I'm going to go into the inside of the pot because I'm want it to have some shading in there. I don't want a light spot on there. So this is all the light so far. And then I've got my dark. I'm going to use the fine tip nubby end to do start my shading on the edges. Look up and see if you guys are commenting. So comment and share um, anything about your experience with Stampin' Up, if you're a demonstrator, how long you've been a demonstrator. Um, I'd love to know who's out there and if you have a story you want to share about how you got introduced to Stampin' Up, I'd love to hear that too. Like I said, I'm going to share my story a little bit later. Some of you may know my story, I've heard it before, but I haven't shared it in a long time, so I think it'll be fun to share it again. All right, so there's what I got so far. Obviously, that's pretty rough, and I need to work on it some more. So I'm going to come back in with my light and sort of soften up the edges where that darkness is. And I'm doing small circular um, motions along the line. Sort of bringing in the edges of that open white spot. And then let's grab our color lifter again. I'm going to use the fat tip and I'm going to go over that light spot and kind of go, I'm going to kind of go over the whole thing, but focusing more on where I want it to be light ish in the center. The color lifter sort of makes the whole thing kind of marbly looking and give it some texture. Let's bring it to the camera and show it so far. So you can see how it kind of changes. And even though I had that stark white spot in the center, it's no longer stark white. Okay, I think I'm done with that. What do you guys think? You good? <laughs> I could go over it with some Wink of Stella if I wanted to. Um, I'm, uh, I'm kind of liking, you know, that these ones red more than the way I ended up doing it kind of breaks it up a little bit more, but you know, like I said, it's a different look. So there we go. All right. So next up, uh, I am going to use on, on my original card. I used this sweet sorbet ribbon. Ooh, what's going on here? Oh boy. That was weird. Did that happen to you? Did the screen go away? <laughs> It just went away for a second there. That was really strange. Hopefully that's not going to happen again. All right. Um, but I'm just happy that it came back. Anyway, this is Sweet Sorbet Ribbon. It's a really cute little ribbon. Coordinates with the B Sweet and the mini catalog. But I have completely used all of this ribbon up. So I wanted to come up with an alternative way to, um, to add a, a touch of Sweet Sorbet along the side. So what I'm going to do for this is use a tiny little strip of the Sweet Sorbet ribbon, I'm sorry, cardstock, and along um, the edge. So this is about a little bit longer than the, the white piece. 
Uh, so I'm going to put some multipurpose liquid glue on this. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because it wasn't, uh, it's a little longer than it needs to be. And I'm just rubbing, brushing it over, rub, rubbing it over there. And I'm going to set this aside to dry. This is one of my favorite tips uh, when using the multipurpose liquid glue is to put it on and set it aside while you're doing something else, let it dry. Because on this thin strip, if I put it down now, it's likely gonna ooze out onto my project and make a mess, or I'll get it on my fingers, which, you know, we don't want that because that's just a pain in the butt. Uh, sticky fingers, don't like them. All right, so we're setting that aside. Let's set our, all of our markers aside, which are those. All right, so this is the white piece that's going to go on the front of the card. And one of the things I'm loving doing these days is creating subtle um, uh, bits of dimension. So dimensionals um, over here are, you know, to me, they end up kind of being thick. I've been doing this 21 years. And so I've been, I see the nuance now that I didn't see many moons ago. So I have recently experimented with it and learned that five layers of cardstock is pretty much the equivalent of the thickness of a dimensional. So if you use cardstock to add dimension, you have much more uh, nuance in how much height you can get. So for this one, I've used some scraps of early espresso cardstock, which I had just sitting around that have been sitting around for a long time. And I'm going to just uh, layer them on the back of my white layer. I've already put one on here just to give me a little jump start. Now, um, I tested this out just to make sure that the espresso wouldn't show through on the white. Most of it's going to be covered up, and I couldn't see it when I had it laid down on a, a darker piece of cardstock, so it was fine. I'm just going to attach that and attach that. This makes the card also really solid because it's got that thickness. It's a little bit heavier, of course, but um, it has a really nice feel to the card when you use these layers of cardstock. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. I'm only using two layers of the espresso in behind. And now if you were to do that on this one, if this ribbon is wrapped all the way around, you'd want to avoid the ribbon. So you'd want it to be a little bit shorter in, in behind the white piece so that it didn't pop up and be uneven with the ribbon layer. So I don't have to worry about that on this one because this one's going to have um, the strip of card stock, stock instead. All right. All right. Let's see. Just checking comments, see if there's anything new that I need to pay attention to. Um, all right, so, okay, next up, I've got some layers on here. I'm gonna bring silicone craft mat in because there's a little bit of glue right there. I don't wanna get it on my workspace. If you do it on a silicone craft mat and it gets on there, you just rubs off, which I love. All right, so I've got my two pieces of my layers that are going in behind. This is Lost Lagoon. This is Pool Party. And I'm just going to kind of get my spacing on here. Um, now, I have put this on so that there's adhesive just on the right side or what will be the left side when it's facing down. Um, every once in a while, I, I put my adhesive on ahead of time just to save time so I have more time to show you things. And these are just release sheets from adhesives, um, you know, adhesive sheets or whatever. So they come in handy. So I'm going to just go ahead and attach this here. And I intentionally didn't put adhesive on here so that it doesn't uh, press down on the card and be uneven. I've got a thing about being even. <laughs> All right. So now I've got adhesive on the back. I lost the goon piece. And one thing to know with these release sheets, sometimes they're not releasing on the back side and they're only like slick on one side. So just pay attention because if you put it down on the side, that's not a release um, layer or surface, it'll stick to it. <laughs> and that's no fun. All right. So I've got my release sheet here and um, I am going to put a couple of glue dots on this side because um, the glue dots give you also a different amount of pop or dimension. And so um, I basically got one height uh, width of cardstock that uh, 
So anyway, the glue dots make it the same height basically as my Lost Lagoon. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and attach it to my front white piece. And I am making sure I'm leaving extra room on the left so I have room for that sweet sorbet strip. Just like that. And let's check our sweet sorbet strip. So when this glue is actually dry, it's gonna be clear. So it's still a little bit wetter than I might like. So I'm just gonna put that aside and put this aside for a minute. Work on something else while I let that dry just a bit more. Okay, so now I have done my coloring on my inside piece ahead of time. Didn't You didn't need to see me color two pieces. Um, and I've got adhesive on the back side. This is my card body, which is just a standard five and a half by eight and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on the inside. How's everybody doing out there? <laughs> Comment and say hello. It's different on, on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, did you have an okay time finding me? Other people I see, Megan, you, so it looks like it took you a little while to find me. Uh, just curious how the whole YouTube thing is going to work for people. All right. So I've um, got a couple extra layers here. I've got my sweet sorbet for um, in behind my focal piece. Now, um, for this version, I thought I would do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna put a white piece in behind to kind of add a little subtlety to these dots. So on this one, I've got the red dots showing through or the sweet sorbet drop, drops showing through spots. But this one, I thought I would try, like I said, have it be a little bit more subtle. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now is just go ahead and attach the white piece. And I like to have the tiniest bit of glue in the corners so that it actually holds down on the corners. Let's see. So I'm just squeezing that out so I can see the tiniest bit of glue coming out the end. You guys maybe can see that. Just squeezing out the end. And then I'm just gonna touch it just the tiniest bit on the corners. Now I'm gonna to need to let that dry, <laughs> probably. Unless I want it, to, unless it's gonna ooze. So it's just on the corners. And then I'm gonna put some regular adhesive, some of the seal in the middle. Okay, so you can see there's glue there and I was able to just wipe it off, no big deal. Okay, so if I lay this down, it's gonna ooze, I can tell already, so I'm not gonna do that. So let's set that aside too, set that aside. We'll do that in just a minute. Now for my focal piece, I also wanted to pop it up a little bit and these little pieces of early espresso were the perfect size. So I'm gonna just add a couple layers to that. trick is uh, holding on to it on the edges so it doesn't yeah I always try to see if there's a better side to be the front so there we go and that one okay so we're in the home stretch here okay so now I'm going back to this piece here, and that is mostly dry. I think it's dry enough, so it's not going to ooze. So let's go ahead and just grab that piece and attach it so that it's centered in the space, the white space there. Okay. That glue, there's a little bit of glue right there, and I'd want to wipe it off before I use the scissors, otherwise I'm going to end up getting it on my scissors. Okay, 
I'm good there. Okay, I like to hold my scissors against the edge of the cardstock to get a nice, clean, even cut. So there we go. Oh, it was much easier to me on YouTube. Oh, good. So glad. Oh, Lorley, YouTube was faster than Facebook. Um, oh, wow. You never, sometimes you never find me on Facebook. <laughs> I get that. I totally understand that. I'm sure you're not alone there too. Uh, and I'm so glad you, this is working out so much better for you. Okay. So all of this is assembled and ready to go. So let's go ahead and just put some adhesive on the back of this. We'll go ahead and attach it to the front of the card. even edges on all the sides. Such a simple little layout. Okay. All right. So now this I think is dry enough. So it should be okay. Now, if you're not sure if it's dry enough and you want to just get dab off a little bit of the glue to make sure it doesn't stick too much, I'm going to go like this. Okay. It's going to come off on my silicone craft mat. These little dots, right? I'll take that one away. And get a clean one. And I know that I've, I have a little bit of glue there, so it's going to hold it down, but it's not going to ooze. So I think that's my trick. And now I'm just going to place my white piece in behind. And it's just a hair smaller, so it's going to be completely hidden back there. And there's my sweet sorbet piece. That looks pretty dry and ready to go. And then we're just going to go ahead and attach those two. Got a nice little bitty edge on the outside for some subtle sweet sorbet there. And then we're just going to go ahead and attach this on. Lots of layers here. <laughs> They're like lots of layers. All right. Got just a couple of one more finishing touch. Got these um, in color pearls. These are the 2022 24 in colors. Oh, I'm glad it was easier for you, Trish, to, to find me. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to use one of these sweet sorbet pearls. Which they actually kind of have a sort of a metallic look to them. They're kind of an interesting embellishment. I'm just going to put that right in the center. So there are my two versions. Tell me which one you like better, either the, the one with the dots, the red showing in behind, or the one with more subtle subtlety and without the dots. It's a slight variation, right? And then of course, this one's just got the strip of cardstock and that's got the ribbon. So just ever so slightly different looks to the cards. Now, I just realized there's one other thing. Did you notice the difference between these two? There's one thing I, I didn't do yet. And my, my question to you is, do I need it? <laughs> so anybody can see the difference? Ah, yes, Lorley, you see it, the shadow under the vase. So you say it needs the shadow under the vase. Does it need the shadow under the vase? What do you think? <laughs> Does it look okay without the shadow or should I add the shadow? Does it add a lot to it? Comment and let me know. <laughs> Can I wait for your response? Ah, yes, Lorley thinks so. <laughs> Anybody else have an opinion? Want to weigh in on that? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Missy says add the shadow. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to use a post-it note and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put this on here. I probably should have done this before I attached all my pieces. 
But truth be told, I did exactly the same thing when I created this one. The underlined shadow was an afterthought. <laughs> so this is no different than what I did before. So um, I am going to put a post-it note here as well because I don't want to get it. I don't want to get it on the red. Um, uh, let's see. So now what I did with this was I actually used my blends alcohol marker and I'm afraid to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to do it again. Um, and just sort of drew, um, kind of a, a general line, like down below. Now I used a, a, a blends, a blending brush, uh, afterwards to add a little bit more, but let's just see how it looks with just that. Um, it's, it's more subtle. But with this one, I was afraid it added too much. Do I need to add more? I think I might need to add more. <laughs> Keep messing with it. It's hard to know when to stop. What do I do again? I need a, a blending brush. I need a blending brush. There. So I just ordered some more of the mini blending brushes. The shadow adds a lot. Hmm. Okay. More. Yes. Trish thinks more. My gut tells me more too. I really want more of the small blending brushes. So these um, are the, the standard big size, right? But the little ones just give you so much more control in a situation like this, but I don't have any more little ones. So um, I'm just going to use a new one and try to get just the littlest bit of ink on here. So I'm grabbing my Smoky Slate ink, which is the same color as the blends alcohol marker that I used. And let's just put a little ink on there. I want just the littlest bit, right? I don't want it to be too much. Better to have less and, be, and add some. So I'm just gonna rub it against that edge. See if we're actually getting anything. Not quite yet. Took off too much. Okay, let's see if that's enough. Okay, it kind of went way across uh, all the way over, but. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> uh, those tiny little blending brushes would be um, a little bit easier to control this. But um, anyway, there we go. I've got my got my little uh, platform or my base, my table for my base. Uh, and I do think it adds a lot to it, personally. You're missing the holes on the white so you can see the red, th red through. So you like seeing the red dots through. Um, yeah. Yeah. I actually, I mean, I, I am surprised actually that I feel that way, but I think I might like the one with the red dots through as well. And you're missing the bow, huh, Mary Beth? <laughs> oh, so here's Mary Beth's suggestion. Put three rhinestones on another type or another type of embellishment at the top of the strip of cardstock. Hmm. That's an interesting thought. I don't know which ones I'd use. Now, if these came in two sizes, I would be inclined to using um, three of the smaller ones, if I had three small ones to put to put up there or even down at the bottom for that matter. Um, three pearls might look good. I have some, um, let's just take a quick look at a couple, one, Iridescent, iridescent pearls. Those might be a nice subtle uh, added element. We'll try that and see what we think. So, top or bottom? I don't know. That would be a, a nice spot for it too, right there in the lower right hand corner. But let's just go with the top left and see what that looks like since that's where the bow was before. I'm just going to stick them on there. I'm not pressing it down so I don't have to commit. I can just see what it looks like and decide from there. Hmm. 
I like how these are so small and subtle. And they've got just the littlest bit of iridescence. I don't know. I'm not sure I love that. Anybody want to chime in on here? Let's see. Here, let's do this. <laughs> While we're going crazy with our pearls, let's try this in the left, lower right corner. Let's see what we think of that. Hmm. Thinking. I think there's a delay in comments. Okay, Mary Beth, you suggested. What do you think? Oh, do you like both of them? The bottom and the upper left? I don't know. It's it's kind of growing on me. So what happens a lot of times when I add things at the last minute when I'm doing live creating is I have to sit on it, look at it for a while, and then I decide later and change it up later if I feel so inclined. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now because I kind of I kind of think it's interesting with the the three at the top left and the other three at the bottom right. And it kind of balances it out a little bit. With these just alone at the top, it kind of just looked like what are you doing there? Like just hanging out. But with them in both places, I kind of I like that. So you guys chime in. Let me know what you think. Yeah. I could color the pearls with sweet sorbet, but I like them in white actually. I kind of like them. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, so there we go. There's our creative project for tonight. I hope you guys like it. Um, I will um, add uh, a photo, this photo, to my Color Futures blog hop post that went live on Monday. So I'll add the photo and maybe a pair of the photos so you guys have uh, can look at that if you want. And um, and then I will have both of the the cards in my free PDF tutorial that will go live in next Wednesday's newsletter. So if you're a newsletter subscriber, you can look forward to getting that um, in uh, next week's newsletter. Uh, oh, I'm glad you liked the card. <laughs> and Trish, you agree with the pearls? Yay. <laughs> Love that. Okay, so um, again, here's the, the bundle that I'm using. This is in the mini catalog. Uh, so we got that. Wonderful. Okay, let's, um, I'm just going to come say hi to you guys for a minute. <laughs> so hello, hello, I'm back, it's me. So um, the cards are there. Um, so I had a couple things that I wanted to also do uh, tonight um, before I say goodbye, really in honor of my 21st anniversary. Um, oh, Barbie's watching but unable to comment. Oh, I'm so glad she's here with us. Tell her I said hello. <laughs> oh, I'm so she wanted you to tell me. That's wonderful. I love it. So a lot of times people are watching and they're kind of out in the background and I don't ever hear from you and I don't know you're out there and I want to know you're out there, right? Um, and be able to say hello. So uh, hi, Isabel. Thank you for commenting and saying hello and congratulations. I appreciate that so very much. Um, all right. So I have here a box, okay? This is one of the, my agendas for the rest of... And on the side, it says past club projects pre-2011 with a question mark. So at some point in time, I decided to start uh, keeping track of and, you know, like catalog organizing all of the, my club projects. So I've had pl clubs since like the year I started in 2003. So a long time ago. Um, so I'm going to start with just a little bit of my story. So if you want to say goodbye to me, that's okay. Um, but I thought I would just share a little bit about my Stampin' Up! journey and my story um, for fun since it's, I'm celebrating my 21st anniversary. And then I thought I'd show you some past projects, just a you know, fun little walk through. And if there's something you see, you go, oh, I want Melissa to make, remake that in some other way or do it again or show us how, you can comment and let me know. Um, I usually do what I call a rewind redo. I take an old project and I remake it with new products just for fun. So um, I will, uh, on my next Facebook Live, which will be in two weeks on March 21st, if there's something you guys see in this box or you have some request of uh, something of a past project, um, I will, you know, take that under advisement and see what I can do <laughs> because I aim to please. So, um, 
All right, so my story, looking at the old projects, and then I have sneak peeks of the brilliant black class projects. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you the actual card. I had sneak peeks in my newsletter um, this past week on Wednesday. Um, so you can see those as well if you're a newsletter subscriber. All right, so a little of my story. So uh, back in 2002, um, I was living in California and my kids were two and six years old, little, little tykes. And I had um, decided that I needed to stay home with my kids. So I had been working. I was actually working on my graduate degree, um, getting my MBA actually at the time with little kids at home and working part time. It was kind of crazy. And um, uh, things changed and um, decided that I needed to stay home with my kids. My older daughter had some special needs. And so it just seemed like the right choice. So um, anyway, was getting to be really friendly with the people in my neighborhood. And one of my neighbors was hosting a Stampin' Up! party. And it was right around my birthday in November of 2020, of 2002. And um, she convinced me to go. I, and my first question to her was, will I have to be creative and see myself as a creative person? And uh, she's like, oh, no, it's going to be all easy. She'll, she'll have it set up and I'm going to have margaritas. So you should come. And it was the day before my birthday. So it just seemed like a really fun idea. So I went, my neighbors, you know, so my neighbors were there and we were all kind of good friends with their kids hung out with each other and all that. They were young kids and just had a really nice time. And I was honestly uh, a little bit overwhelmed by it all. Right. There was a big catalog like we have these big, huge annual catalogs that are completely overwhelming. And uh, so I didn't end up buying anything, but the person, the demonstrator said, well, celebration is coming. And if you host a party during celebration, you can get free stuff. So I thought, well, if I'm going to try this, I want to get some free stuff. I don't want to pay for all of it. Right. So uh, long story short, right. January comes, I host my party. I got about $60 of free stuff and I spent about $60 and I literally started dreaming in color and layout. And I, I just like couldn't get it out of my head. I was drawn to it like a magnet. It was like, wow, this is like makes being creative so easy, right? Like it, I felt like I could be creative. And I look back at some of the projects from way back when and I go, hmm, not so good. <laughs> but, you know, things progress, you learn, you grow. And uh, I, a, my friend hosted a party in the following April. I really wanted to earn my quick start so we get free product. And uh, anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun at that party. I was nervous as all hell, but um, <laughs> people enjoyed it. They said I was funny. And uh, eventually I learned that I really, really enjoyed teaching. Um, and that's one of the greatest things I've learned from being, um, from being a demonstrator. So anyway. 21 years later, here I am. And I have learned so much, not just in the way of crafting, but um, technology. And, you know, back then it was parties and now I'm online and I've learned all this stuff. And uh, I was thinking today, you know, should I really go line up live on YouTube? <laughs> this is like, you know, especially being my anniversary. It's like, no, this is the perfect time to go live because, you know, it just, uh, it's another mark in time of the things that you learn and how you grow over time. You know, the more you're with something, the more you dedicate to something. And uh, so anyway, and change comes and change goes and some changes you like and some changes you don't like and some things you, you know, are harder to learn or easier to learn. But uh, the, my, and there are potentially some changes happening in Stampin' Up! Or, you know, coming sometime soon, more on that later. But uh, my attitude is as long as I'm creating and enjoying and loving the creating and sharing and being part of the community and people show up and want to create with me um, and, uh, and share creativity, then that's what it's supposed to be, right? So um, anyway, I'm so happy that you're, I'm here. Thank you for listening to my story. Um, I'd love to hear yours too. If you have stories you want to share, please share them in the comments uh, if you feel so inclined. But um, yeah, so here I am. That's my story. So 20 years, 21 years in, and like I said, clubs, I've gone from having as many as one, as few as one club up to three clubs, 25 club members, and things are, you know, changed over time. But anyway, so I have a lot of different things we've done as clubs. Um, so I'm going to reveal this box now. We're going to go through it. And um, 
I am going to just move the projects aside. Just realized I didn't actually put the pearls down, so they're moving around <laughs> over here. So I'm going to move that carefully so that it doesn't uh, you know, fall off and I lose them. And uh, and then I'm going to highlight my, my workspace again so you can see the projects I have to share. All right. Back to my desktop. So here's this, this fun box. Now, the funny thing about this box, um, unlike some of the other containers I have, um, now up on to the side of me over up here, I have these boxes with, or and they're pretty much all cards. There's a few boxes, but this box of projects, a lot of them are 3D things. So um, let's just, uh, so uh, I was thinking maybe I should like number them so that if anybody has thoughts about, you know, I really would like to see more on how you did that, you could comment with the number. So I'm just gonna get a few post-it notes here and a Sharpie and, uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna number them as I show them. And that way you guys can comment and say, oh yeah, show me more of that. All right. so. We're gonna call this one one. Now this one is um, vellum um, and it's actually got dry embossing in behind uh, that's done with a stylus. So manually in behind and then it's heat embossed on the surface. But vellum is one of those things that a lot of times people will say is kind of a ne neglected item. So anyway, that's uh, um, one project number one. No inside, naked inside, bed me. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit better about doing insides, but this one is so adorable. Check that out. So we used to have a, um, you know, scallop punch. And so that's supposed to be like the popsicle with the bite out of it. I love that one. We don't have a scallop punch right now, but uh, the little oranges on the inside. And I think that's a, just, just adorable. I don't know about you guys. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you for saying that, Megan. Um I, you know, it's been a long journey and a lot of fun and, uh, uh, and I'm very grateful, super grateful. So, uh, check that out, right? This is like a little stand up banner. We did this in a club, these beautiful large dyes and there's some dry embossing there. I don't know if you can see it on that piece. There's strips of white on that piece, uh, to give it some texture um, anyway, yeah, pretty cool. That's a, a, a punch. Now, I probably couldn't really cre recreate that too well because we don't have big letters, but I'll number it anyway. <laughs> you can tell me which ones you, you like uh, as I go. Okay, here's a box with a 3D ornament on it. Isn't that fun? And this box isn't your regular box with a lid, right? It's a box that pulls open like a drawer. Okay, so like that. And we used to have these dyes that were um, not the way for thin dyes that we're using now, but these just huge, thick, chunky dyes that would go through chipboard. Um, and this is one of those. And uh, it looks like I've got a shimmer on it as well. Some kind of shimmer. I can't even remember what that is. Elastic, uh, a little silver cord there. Anyway, cute, right? <laughs> okay, can't make that. So anyway, I'm not, not even going to number that one. Here's another one. It's a Halloween project with bubble gum in it. So <laughs> cute. So fun, right? Um, little bat in there. I don't know how I would make that one with gumballs. So I'm not going to number the ones that are like completely unrealistic. Okay, here's another Halloween one. I can't remember what I called this, but... Uh, I think it has dazzling diamonds, glitter, and heat embossing. And it was a technique that I made up, you know, whatever, a million years ago. Um, and it's just a really cool look. And I know I have the directions written somewhere, so I could actually do that. But um, so I'm going to give that a number. So that's number four. <laughs> yeah, the box is fun. Doing 3D things is very fun. Okay, and here's a little, a little bag. <laughs> a little box bag with a tag right there. Cute, right? And you put candy in it or some little cards that are sized to fit in it or whatever. Just cute. Okay, we'll do that one. Nobody's doing numbers, but I'm going to go ahead and keep putting the numbers on there just for the heck of it. 
<laughs> okay. So what else? Oh, here's some some little cards that I think went in this box. So check that one out. Little mini Valentine cards. So that goes with that one. Here's another one. I like making little mini cards. I think those are bigger than three by three. Here's another one. <laughs> Cute, right? Ah, there's some crazy involved ones in here too. Oh, look at that. I don't know what that came from. Hmm. That's a little rogue piece. Valentine, I'm sorry, a Christmas card. Love those stockings. Aren't those fun? Okay. Where's my little place? It's I buried them. I don't have any stockings, so I'm not going to number that one. But isn't that fun? I love stockings. <laughs> All right. A bookmark. Oh, my gosh. That's so faded. Check that out. That's lovely as a tree for any of you guys who recognize that. Uh, oh, from Stamp Club. Look, it was a Stamp Club bookmark, right? Of course, these are all Stamp Club projects. So we had the dates on the back, and I actually circled the club dates for a little handy-dandy reminder to people of when the club events were. Uh, okay, moving right along. Okay, so while we're on the bookmark train, here's another bookmark done like a little pocket with a star at the end so you just put that on the sleeve of you know the page to keep your page i love bookmarks i actually have a magnetic bookmark um that i'm using now for a book that i'm reading my daughter gave me all right this one's falling apart a little bit <laughs> this is a pop-up surprise card i've done these a couple times over the years but check this out oh my gosh gotta do it this way is that fun <laughs> Some of you may remember some of these uh, stamp sets as well, um, or these styles of cards, but I just, this is an oldie but a goodie, right? This is so much fun. Hello, this is the kind of card you just wanna keep playing with. <laughs> this is too much fun. Okay, what number did I leave off on? I think I'll, I'll call this one five. I'm making a big old pile here. Uh, okay. We used to, at clubs, we would do uh, a little technique, and I have technique books. This was, some of you may remember, Polished Stone, and I had these just tiny little technique cards, tiny little writing. Now I do technique pages that are bigger, because <laughs> those are pretty small, right? Um, so anyway, yeah, technique pages are fun. And I love Polished Stone, but we don't have glossy card stock anymore, so can't do that until they bring it back. I have actually requested that... Uh, Stampin' Up! Bring back the glossy card set. Okay, here's another one. This is a little, you know, Valentine-type treat. There are, what are those, uh, Tic Tacs inside. Would not ever dare to open this up and try any of the chocolate or the Tic Tacs because I'm sure they're completely stale. <laughs> Funny, right? All right. Yes, you like the techniques? I have technique books. One day, maybe I'll do it on the 21st, I have two, well, actually, I have three technique books. Um, and some of them have these little mini cards in them. Some of them have um, technique pages that are a little bit bigger. And then my latest technique book, it has them, they're like six by eight. Um, so yeah, technique books, love them. Okay, what else? Um, here's another one. This is a, a goodie, a old favorite. I think that one's super cute with the little um, giraffe in there. I'm sure that was a case. I stole that idea from somebody, but um, yeah, I can't recreate that because I don't know how I would do that. But okay, here's the, the last two are, actually there's three in here. So there's this one. You guys have probably seen this kind of card layout. It's a uh, kind of stands up and I don't even know what that's called, but kind of cool, right? I could do that layout. I've seen that. Um, at other times. I don't know. I guess I'm on six. I'm skipping a bunch of these because some of them I just, I don't know that I have the supplies to make anything like it. All right. Uh, here's this next one <laughs> is a crazy fun fold. And maybe some of you have seen this one as well, but we just in a club. <laughs> Super fun, right? Uh, let's see. Where was number five? You said, see what I could do to try to create number five. I don't know where five is. Okay, there's five. Yes, five is a fun one. All right, so then this one would be seven. <laughs> Crazy, complicated cuts there, but actually it's really not that complicated. So there's seven. 
And last but not least, we'll make this eight. My favorite always to make a post-it note holder because that's always fun, right? Right there. And it's got a pen that sticks in, you know, it's here to stick in. And uh, yeah, you all need post-it note holders, right? <laughs> so that'll be eight. And okay, so we got, yeah, so there we go. I didn't number all of them. All of them are not practical to make, but you get the idea. Okay, so there they are. There's a whole bunch of fun, different projects, and I have many, many more. You figure there was a long time where I was doing um, projects uh, and clubs every month. Uh, I think it was back in 2008. Uh, I'm going to come back on screen here. Um, I stopped with every month and I went to every other month. So you're talking the first, whatever, five years or four years, maybe, because I didn't really start clubs. Well, I had a club in California, but then when I moved here, it took me in North Carolina, it took me about two years to get a club going, to meet enough people because I didn't know anybody here. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then I met people and all kind of took off and it was super fun. Met a lot of fun, crafty, creative people uh, that way. In fact, I have a club on the 22nd in the morning and uh, here in my studio and the evening of the 29th. Those are my two in-person clubs. And uh, the club class is actually the brilliant black technique. So I'm incorporating techniques and uh, a, either a bundle or a stamp set into my club classes. So that's one of the main things I'm doing these days because I'm trying to um, sort of funnel more of my activities and have me like spread less thin. <laughs> so I offer, I'm offering the, the Brilliant Black as a a la carte class. And then it's also for my in-person club members and for my online club members. So if any of that's something you're interested in, definitely check it out. Links in the video description. So um, now I've got this big like mess right here, but I wanted to show you sneak peeks of those projects. So I'm going to go ahead and do that too. You like eight, number eight too. Okay, there you go. This post it out. I'll, I'll read the comments afterwards as well. <laughs> so much fun. And uh, comment if you uh, want a quick sneak peek of my, my technique books or, or books, any of them. Um, maybe I'll consider doing that next time. Or, you know, like I said, I'll pick one of the projects you guys seem to be excited to see. All right. So sneak peeks of my brilliant black class projects. So that class, the featured um, stamp set, and I really decided to just do a stamp set this time, moving all the other stuff sitting around here, um, is the Delicate Forest stamp set. And I love these images. I've had a ton of fun playing with them. Um, I decided not to use the dies. Well, I actually used the dies, one of them, for one of the sentiments, but uh, I mostly focused on, focused on the stamps. And um, I have a, a stamping friend who's in the UK, UK. He'll probably maybe watch this tomorrow when it's not in the middle of the night for him. But um, he commented once and shared that, uh, you know, when you've been doing this for a long time, sort of the old style of doing it is not really very die based, right? It's more about stamps, ink and paper, right? And doing interesting techniques and playing with the images and all that. And that is really my kind of core um, and my go-to. So this class is more oriented towards just the stamping, right? And, and the techniques and less on dies. So anyway, so I'm going to show you the projects. Are you ready? You see them? <laughs> um, oh, I'm so glad you liked my walk down memory lane, Annie. Thanks for being here. <laughs> and I see Lynn, you're here as well. Semastic designs, right? That's Lynn. <laughs> All right. So quick look. So there is project number one. It's all stamping on black. Sentiments from the set. Project number two, and we're using these embellishments where there's sort of a goldish copper one and a silver one, which is the one on here. And then my final card, which I think is probably my favorite. I think they're so fun, right? Dramatic black, right? But brilliant black because those brilliant colors coming through on black is such a unique look, right? So it's gonna be, it's a fun, fun class. Um, and you can you can sign up for the class itself with the kit in the mail, or you can sign up and just get the PDF tutorial. It's totally up to you. Um, and uh, the in-person classes, like I said, are on the 22nd of March and 29th in the evening of March. 
excuse me. And then the online event will be on Zoom, or you can just watch the replay if you don't want to join us on Zoom. Um, on April 17th, I'm doing it in the afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but again, if you can't make that time, you can always watch the replay if you decide to join us in the class for the kit or for the PDF or whatever you want to do. Um, I just love sharing this craft with with all of you and so grateful that you're out there and and want to want to be there with me. <laughs> and thank you for sticking it out for being here with me this whole time. It's been a long, a long Facebook live for my my anniversary uh, celebration. All right. What else do I need to say? I'm going to wrap this up. So again, all of the reminders are in the description of the this video. And uh, whether you're watching live or the replay, I'm so glad you're here. And um, thanks for joining me for my inaugural YouTube live video. <laughs> so much fun. And for celebrating my anniversary with me too. All right, everyone, I'll see you in two weeks uh, on the 21st of March for another live. And I will be going live here on YouTube again. So super fun. Uh, and I hope you'll join in again. And uh, yeah, I see some comments coming through. And I, you know, I don't uh, know if the comments, if they're different on when I see them on YouTube. I don't know. I can't tell whether, yeah, it looks like they're all the same. <laughs> learning, learning, right? I'm learning, learning as I go. All right. We'll see you. We'll see you soon whenever we see you. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to have lots of fun on my on my trip thinking about me. <laughs> it's a great way to celebrate my anniversary. So being with team members and with lots of enthusiastic uh, paper crafters and demonstrators, it's going to be so fun. So excited to be with those of you who are going to be there with me <laughs> um, there in Houston. Okay. Bye, everybody. Happy crafting. <laughs>